Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Terry James Gingrass, and this is Dr. G's ADHD chat. And I'm running just a little bit today, late today rather, because I am <laughs> fighting technology. Uh, it and I don't always get along very well, and today it tried to get me. But we're finally here, and I think we're looking about the way we usually do and sound about the same. Okay, uh, this is a show trying to make the world safe for ADHD. I am a clinical psychologist and neuropsychologist, and I'm in private practice, and a lot of my practice is ADHD. Uh, kids, adults, families, uh, <laughs> married couples, uh, and Right now, at this stage of my career, I'm, I'm mostly doing assessments. Prior to that, I was doing therapy and, and all of that sort of thing. And um, I have a lot of frustrations about the way ADHDers are treated. And I think that that's totally unnecessary. And I think it is something we can do something about if we kind of get together um, an ADHDer's biggest problem is without a doubt school. Schools are not designed for kids with interest-based attention systems. Well, that's, and that's by and large. I'm, I think the Montessori schools are pretty much in, in, in step with uh, ADHDers, but generally the schools teach they spend an inordinate amount of time teaching compliance. That is, turn in your homework, do your homework, do your paper, get it in on time, don't be late, dip de dip um, And increasingly, they're taking away any time in the school day that a kid would have to get some exercise, work off some steam, Etc. Maybe to enough to survive the day. So anyway, so we are in that situation, uh, and we parents are. Oh, boy, I forgot to mention, I'm also the uh, father of a child, or uh, he's an adult now with ADHD. So I've uh, been through the ringer, and I've been through it uh, back in the days when we didn't know a whole bunch about our uh, ADHD. Uh, Actually, I went through my whole graduate program in uh, clinical psychology without ever hearing a thing about ADHD, which I think is amazing uh, when I think back on it. Um, but anyway, uh, when I first recognized that I had something on my hands here besides what I had with my other children, um, I was in a position you know, to read journal articles, go to conferences, find out about things, and um, get so I knew a little bit about what, what all this stuff was about. But anyway, today I want to talk about something a little different, and, a little, and frankly I'm a little uncomfortable with it. There has been a recent emergence of something people are calling Rejection Sensitive Dysphoria, or RSD. And it is the idea that people, certain people, are more sensitive to rejection than others. The problem we have with, with this whole concept is, first of all, it's not in the diagnostic categories. It's the, the DSM does not have rejection sensitive dysphoria. Uh, dysphoria, uh, ICD-9, 10, nope, it's not there. So we're talking about something that's kind of in the, somebody wrote a paper, and that eh, sounds like something that might somebody might have, but we're not real sure. But I know when I look at my experiences with ADHD kids, and, you know, I mean, these are kids that are under under the gun. They're doing battle. 
every day trying to get through the day without getting our, our red light you know for the whole classroom and all that stuff but it's it's some of the symptoms of this actually I don't know if we can call them symptoms yet it's not an official diagnosis there's signs being easily embarrassed getting very angry or emotional when they feel like someone has hurt them or rejected them set high standards for themselves they often can't meet have low self-esteem feel anxious in social settings have problems with relationships stay away from social situations and withdraw from other people feel like a failure because they haven't lived up to other people's expectations and sometimes think about hurting themselves okay I mean God knows that an ADHD child meets more than the normal amount of rejection. There are teachers who reject them. There are classmates who reject them. There are parents who occasionally reject them. It's all, um, you know, part of, I think, the out of control executive functioning system that's the most prominent feature of ADHD. Um, and so you have plenty of chances to develop a sensitivity to rejection. And you can, I mean, there are no firm terms in this stuff. You know, there's no uh, well, there's no research approved set of diagnostic symptoms there's no research approved sets set of Avian treatments uh, some people will will say that well if you want to treat this stuff one of the best things you can use is a thing called guancafine which is actually a, a designed for uh, uh, it's designed for low to, to lower blood pressure I have no idea why that has anything to do with treating any kind of a mental disorder or you know what exactly it was going to do for somebody with um, ADHD or RSD. Anyway, so I know this is uh, sort of starting to sound like a ramble, but. I'm just not very comfortable with this, but it is, and the other thing that makes it even more confusing is there is another RSD out there in the medical world. It's called reflex sympathetic dystrophy. And basically that's something that happens to people who have had damage to a limb and then sometimes the autonomic nervous system for that particular limb, say it's your arm, goes bananas and so sometimes your arm is really cold sometimes it's really hot sometimes it's really swollen uh, it can be swollen hot and really red it can be white and cold um, and it's a pretty painful kind of kind of disorder to have because you never know what you're going to get you know and when you're going to get it um, anyway, and I ran into that when I was uh, uh, doing a postdoc in behavioral medicine. Um, and the treatments for that are roughly, roughly de defined. Uh, and a lot of times, what basically what you do is you uh, anesthetize the patient and run that the affected limb through range of motion kinds of kinds of tr you know treatments. But anyway, so I once had a patient come into my office and say, "Do you know anything about RSD?" And I said, reflex sympathetic dystrophy? Sure. I know I've been through a few uh, cases of that. He got a little irritated. No, I mean rejection sensitive dysphoria. Well, we didn't get along very well, and I basically said, perhaps you should find somebody else to work with on this. The other, the other, you know, depressing or disconcerting parts of this, since it's got a name and people are talking about it, is 
um, that the symptoms are not real clearly subscribed or prescribed. No, described. <laughs> anyway, we don't know exactly what we're looking at, except for, you know, being hurt more than the average bear by rejection. I don't know what that means exactly. I've been hurt by rejection. Um, but anyway, I think one of the one of the things we'll probably eventually decide is it's just another broader symptom of the whole turmoil of having ADHD. Uh, I can't be 100% sure that that's what's going to happen, but uh, it seems like the, the most likely way to go with it. I mean, anybody who's been around a person with ADHD knows that intense, rapid emotional uprisings, if you will, are not uncommon, uh, and a lot of things can bring them on. You know, I mean, the world is really frustrating if you have ADHD. You know, you don't work on the same clock as everybody else. You don't get stuff done the way other people do. You don't remember orders and instructions as well as other people do. Um, and you have trouble getting started on projects. You have trouble finishing projects. You know, life is pretty frustrating. And you have troubles with the relationships. So... RSD, I don't know if that's going to go down as just part of the, the disorder or if it's going to become a separate disorder of its own. Uh, but if it ever does, it will take a tremendous amount of research to substantiate it. And I don't know. Maybe there are a bunch of people out there in the world doing that research right now. Uh, but uh, my advice would be uh, get the treatment for ADHD and get that stabilized, you know, because, you know, even if, okay, you go through the whole process, you get diagnosed or you get your child diagnosed, then you go through the uh, whole uh, getting started on medication, getting the medication titrated so that you're getting uh, the dosage that is appropriate for you. Uh, and then uh, starting hopefully some psychotherapy with an emphasis on the learning how to compensate for, for the disorder, you know, by first of all recognizing situations when you're going to have problems and then developing uh, compensatory strategies, things that you do that help make up for difficulties taking notes in a classroom, say, or uh, paying attention in a meeting, those kinds of things. So, That would be where I would start. And you, if you go in talking about the symptoms that you have that you think are rejection-sensitive dysphoria, you are probably going to get diagnosed with depression. And I'm not even sure how somebody makes, makes a distinction, but apparently they do. And if maybe eventually we'll have enough information that we can say, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I really know that's that's something that, that's happened to people. I don't know. It, it may disappear. I, I just don't know. Uh, and I'm not going to suggest that a bunch of ADHDers start going out and looking for even more trouble than, than life naturally brings. So get the ADHD treated. Uh, understand it's not going to be an even ride. You're, you're going to have some days where you're really frustrated and you're going to have some days that seem pretty good. Uh, but don't stop. That's one of the good things about ADHD is, by and large, they don't stop. They are persistent. And good. That's what you need. Okay, that's my little shorter harangue than usual. Uh, I'm Dr. Terry James Gingrass. And this is Dr. G's ADHD chat. And we've been talking about RSD uh, with some skepticism, I will freely admit. And remember, this is the show for people who are trying to make the world safe for ADHD. Uh, because, as I always say, ADHDers think outside the box. People who think outside the box are the folks who solve 
the big problems. And maybe your child is the one that's going to solve the big problems. Or maybe you yourself are going to be someone who solves the, the real problems. And so I encourage you to encourage them and encourage yourself. And um, let's make the world safe. Okay, catch you next week.